In this video, we'll be looking at monitoring multipurpose cache or MPC. You may have noticed that many of the upcoming indicators we looked at in the previous session were for specific sectors. Multipurpose cache, MPC, is designed to enable recipients to meet their basic needs in accordance with their own priorities. This flexibility in the design and use of MPC can make the monitoring of associated outcomes more complex. So, how can we best approach the monitoring of outcomes for MPC? Let's briefly remind ourselves of some key aspects of multipurpose cache, which are relevant when thinking about monitoring. MPC is a type of assistance, not a program in and of itself nor is there one standard universal way of doing it. Interventions using MPC will vary in terms of transfer value, frequency, and duration, which are critical in determining how effective they are in addressing needs. MPC transfer values are often calculated with reference to a minimum expenditure basket, MEB, which will encompass items and costs from a range of different sectors as well as cost that may not sit within a specific sector. Because MPC enables disaster-affected people to make choices and prioritize their own needs, it may or may not lead to them meeting humanitarian standards for assistance in relation to a given sector. Drawing on this aspect of multipurpose cash, let's look at some key implications for monitoring. MPC is one form of CBA, so much of the same general guidance applies, including the types of monitoring issues and indicators to consider at the process and output levels. Also, at immediate outcome level to a large extent, for example, people's ability to spend the cash, where and how. The more significant differences relate to medium term outcomes. When monitoring MPC outcomes, we can be looking at measures of both people's ability to meet their own self-defined needs and whether minimum humanitarian standards, such as sectoral standards, are being met. We will also need to monitor and look at the context in which MPCs have been given, such as price fluctuations, any chances in access, seasonability, coping strategies and well-being. There are a range of different perspectives on what type of information should and should not be collected to monitor MPC outcomes. Some have emphasized whether recipients can meet their self-defined needs and remain in gaps, often using more holistic outcome measures, for example, relating to well-being. Other people place more emphasis on sectoral outcomes, and there are also differing perspectives on whether and how to incorporate expenditure data in the process. These types of debates have also hinged on how to make data collection demands manageable and based on what is really required. Firstly, process output and outcome indicators should be identified based on the program design, objectives and context, regardless of the type of assistance. Practitioners can use general CVA monitoring guidance when monitoring MPC as well as specialized guidance for MPC outcome monitoring. Secondly, there are two main types of information to collect relating to outcomes. Cross-cutting indicators, indices, and question, for example, addressing the extent to which basic needs are being met in general or other non-sector specific measures, and sector specific indicators, such as sectors selected based on needs, the MPC is intended to address. Practitioners may also choose to collect expenditure data. To help resolve some of the issues with outcome monitoring and provide a basis for better and more consistent measurement of the outcomes to which MPC contributes, work was undertaken under the Grand Bargain Cash Warstream to develop MPC outcome indicators. The first draft for testing was released in mid-2019 
and contains a core minimum group of indicators, along with guidance and recommendations on how to select and use them. Note that the aim is to collect feedback on the use of these indicators and use this to undertake a revision in 2021. How extensive or otherwise this revision is will depend on the feedback received with a survey still pending. Now, let's take a look at the cross-cutting indicators, indices, and questions in a bit more detail. There is one required cross-cutting indicator, which looks at the extent to which basic needs are met. This indicator is percentage of household who report being able to meet the basic needs of the household, all, most, some, known, according to their priorities. There are, of course, likely to be differing perceptions of what constitutes basic needs among respondents, which should be considered in how the question is asked and analyzed. This indicator is complemented by two recommended qualitative questions, which are intended to help explore how the cash has supported recipients and remaining needs. There is also a multi-question process indicator on quality, protection mainstreaming, and accountability to affected population, and one indicator on gender equity. These were included due to the important place on this type of data during consultations, even though they don't fall in the outcome category. These are percentage of beneficiaries reporting that humanitarian assistance is delivered in a safe, accessible, accountable, and participatory manner. And percentage of women reporting shared decision-making on cash transfer use. These were developed by ECHO and are also under revision following testing. Another optional cross-cutting indicator is drawn from the Livelihoods Cobin Strategy Index. Measuring the use of Cobin strategies and whether there are improvements or deterioration over time can provide important understanding of the overall situation recipient households are in and how cash transfer might influence this. This type of index must be adapted to the given context to be effective. For example, identifying relevant coping strategies and scoring within them according to severity as this can vary. For example, taking on debt may be almost standard practice in some contexts, but the sign of more severe hardship in others. Also, the amount and the type of debt is likely to be a factor in both cases. There have been some other experiments to use indices related to resilience or well-being. For example, the Red Cross has been doing some research into and small scale piloting of some well-being indicators. However, further testing is required. New indices, scales and indicators may become available over time to better measure the impact of MPC both within and across sectors. This is something that needs to be further researched and tested in practice. Now, let's look further at the sector-specific indicators included in the Grand Bargain MPC Outcome document. These indicators are intended to represent the most critical relevant outcomes for the sector that MPC might substantially contribute to between one and three indicators per sector. Further intended sectoral outcomes and indicators must be identified on a project by project basis. These indicators were identified in consultation and agreement with the relevant clusters. Some clusters, for example, nutrition or protection, choose not to include outcome indicators as at the time of initial development, suitable ones hadn't been identified agreed upon. Rather than encouraging collection of data against all sectors and indicators, which could very quickly become unmanageable or very time consuming, the document proposed at least one indicator from each of the three sectors is required. 
the sectors should be selected based upon the identified needs and people's priorities using MEB or transfer value categories or amounts may be helpful. Practitioners may also choose to collect expenditure data. There are obvious potential benefits to this in understanding how the cash is actually used, but it's also worth being aware of challenges around recall and accuracy. For example, it's recommended that expenditure-based indicators should inquire about overall household expenditures, not only the use of the MPC transfers. Also, instead of measuring exact amounts, agencies may wish to simply ask people the three or five most important expenditure categories as part of a lighter people-centered approach. Thank you for listening.